I don't know what the topic is this week. It's Brandon's. But I'm excited about it. This, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, but you pro you look like you sound great. Yeah. I think you look like you sound great. I like that. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. He's got the toothpick though, so he still came through with with the vibe. Wait, yeah. what is the what is the what? Damn you! Which Stop shoes it. are you wearing? Which shoes are you wearing? Why? Which shoes are you wearing? Important. Why? Because we were talking about it before you got on here. Yeah. Oh my god. Before I got on here, you had a whole conversation. Yep. Call it. Boots. Oh, we we knew you we were wearing boots when you said you had a you had a piss before the, you got on. Yeah. The group chat was lit up with we could tell what you were wearing on your feet. Because of I said I got a piss. Vernacular changes based upon what you're wearing. So if I I have to use the restroom as what? Dress shoes. You're, you're wearing your turtleneck. Your turtleneck. <laughs> got it. That's fair. All right, guys. I got to go to the restroom real quick because nobody, That's, nobody yeah, wearing a turtleneck true. goes. I had to take a piss. I had to take a wicked piss. Up. Like, <laughs> except for Brandon. Guilty. Guilty as charged. To be fair, he does have elbow pads. You know, the like the the, Ooh, the university Hamilton. professor elbow pads, which I and, and love. Earl Grey tea oh, and. In a in a Lion King mug, but it's a it's a it's a collection of things. So there's Wrangler here mm -hmm. with a little bit of class, a little bit of ass, and these jeans and boots. There it is. There we there go. Is. Right there. Right there. Sponsored by Wrangler, hopefully soon. Matter matter of time. Matter, matter of time. time. <laughs> um, Shall we cheers to my nine drinking self? Yes. Yes. Let's do it. Very much enjoy that. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. You enjoy my non-drinking self? <laughs> enjoy the reason that I know why you're not. He's like, yeah, that's right. You're a lot more fun when you're not drunk. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. Everyone's a lot more fun when they're more self-aware, though. Mm. Yes, they are. I respect yes, they that. are. I respect that. Yeah. Not just as um, a choice that you're making for yourself currently, your present self, mm -hmm. as I said to you in private, uh, something that I think is worth sharing in public is that yeah. I'm proud of you for doing something that two episodes, three episodes ago we talked about, which is doing something your future self will thank you for, right? Mm -hmm. You're taking care of yourself now so that you can look at your future self and shake hands and say, I got you. When I, when I get to you, you're gonna be okay. That way yeah. you don't have to worry. I think that's yeah. a good thing. I think good on you. You know? Yeah. This time has required a lot of focus. And I think because of the, the drinking, it was distracted me, you know? And that it was like, it's easy to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to get to that. No, I'll just have another beer. No, I'll just have another whiskey. Let's just finish the whole bottle. Who cares? It's a Friday. It's actually Tuesday, but it's a Friday. It's a Friday somewhere. It's a, no, it's not. Nowhere. <laughs> no. If it's a Thursday, as Charles Schultz famously said, don't worry about the world coming to an end today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. Come on, somebody. I really yeah. like that. I mean, Could, Charles Schultz. <laughs> Come on. But can you imagine, though, you're like calling a friend in Australia and the world's ended there and we're just a day late? And you're like, <laughs> guys, 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 it's coming. We've got to finish Game of Thrones. Come on. Right now. Right I, assume, now. I assume that's what everybody's finishing. I'm, I, I don't I don't know. I don't watch TV, which is ironic. For but if you had to pick a favorite TV show, what would it be? Yellowstone is the like currently um, at the top of my list just because it, it – encompasses a lot of things. Lot. I, I don't mean to steal yours. I know that's probably close to the top of your list. Um, no, just because that's something that I've, I've absolutely loved. I'm a big Kevin Costner fan. I'm a big mm -hmm. Taylor Sheridan fan. I'm a big fan of the entire lifestyle that is my dad was mounted patrol uh, as a police officer. A lot of people don't know that. So I, when I was spending time with him in the precincts, it was in a barn. Um, mm -hmm. I rode uh, his horse 
Uh, but I was told that I got to name it myself, which was Bob the Ninja Horse. So I have lots of pictures of me and my cowboy hat and my boots and my dad leading me around on Bob the Ninja Horse. I am about yay high to a grasshopper and that is a big fucking horse. <laughs> it's like that thoroughbred you sent us pictures. I mean, he's literally a beautiful, beautiful, like chestnut brown thoroughbred. I mean, he's a stunning horse. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Dicky or uh, Dave, sorry. That's the one we're currently watching. I'm a big fan of that. But he's little Dickie's the rapper. So yeah. yeah, little Dickie's the rapper. But I feel like it's kind of in in a similar style to stories that like the way that we would like to tell part of love is in the style and the honesty of shows like Atlanta or shows like Dave or shows that are very viscerally, this is my voice and this is my energy and go go with that i just i like the directorial style of it i like the pacing of it i like the writing and the honesty um and it makes her laugh so that always gets me john uh suits is probably one of, my, one of the top ones um a lot of mm -hmm. i also love white collar a lot of people don't know white collar but i think classic, classic bomber also, yeah love white collar and then office i, I go between those three God, I mean, those office. shows are those shows are so you. God, no, the that office is really, like, we should have guessed. <laughs> we should have fucking guessed before. No, I think the office had so many memories and so many episodes, and just I can have that in the background if I'm like not in the greatest mood or sad. Like that move, that show always makes me knows how to make me smile. I like that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Brandon? Peaky Blinders, man. Mm. Oh yeah. Peaky Blinders and then and then Yellowstone because I already finished Yellowstone but then I got into Peaky Blinders and I just love the act like if you're coming from an acting standpoint right if performance wise there's just such a uh you get sucked into that world of Peaky Blinders yeah. you're sucked into these characters you're sucked into like Tom Hardy's character and, and this guy uh Killian Murphy is just he's putting on a workshop every episode mm -hmm. yeah every episode um so i really enjoy like watching them go through it and and something uh, a friend of mine was talking about it's like you can't they, they have a hard time watching a show where a character doesn't have a redemptive quality where you're like there's no hope for this character mm -hmm. but even though these guys are terrible there's something about them that's like oh, i hope they can get out of the business one day yeah. I hope they can get out of the business one day, yeah. you know? But yeah, th those are my top two. It's what? funny that you say that because it just reminds me of um, this critique that I saw. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. The reason mm. that it exists is similar to the, the reason that they're making a John Wick four and five currently. And it's that they started with the exact opposite of most kind of character development where they, instead of taking the moral, like slowly learning the moral high ground and that's the character arc, they become increasingly worse people over the course of it. And you're constantly just like, I, they couldn't possibly be worse and then they do something worse. And that's something that I love about Peaky Blinders is that you have this kind of dichotomy of they're trying so hard to, to get out in their way, but the way out is through. Yeah. It's, it's, going through, it's, yeah. it's and I think I mean this is maybe an unintentional analogous metaphor for life like we we when we go through how often do we suddenly realize you see that uh kind of graph or or um uh I got meme of what success looks like and what success really looks like yeah and to me what I'm thinking of is when you go through it looks like it's just gonna be a bunch of like, oh shit, this is gonna be hard. And it's actually like this, it's way worse than you thought to get, like, it's so much harder. There's other things and you have to go down and then be willing to still come back up through still being in that. Um, yeah. And I think that's what's so incredible about them in that show is you see them go deeper and deeper into something and and have to continue to figure their way out, but they are getting smarter. My bear, monster, I don't know. 
so exciting. I think that also the thing is, is like if you actually take away what the actual things are doing and what their motives are, their motives are family. It's family oriented. Take care of the family. It like yep. down their personal motives is what I think we find ourselves being able to resonate with. They're willing to do anything for their family. They just choose a very interesting route to try to figure that out. And I think the other thing that I really like about that show is the range of the actors abilities the, everyone is a character in itself oh and they play yeah. it in such a amazing like polly polly has some episodes where like her character she gets in her character and I, I forget the name of the actual actress um but her range in that show is incredible along with all the characters but they all play their characters so well that it tells and it's exactly what a family of like in a sense gypsies you would think would come out and like look like yeah pa Polly had an episode recently where she was like finally in love and from from the ones that, um, from the, the last season that i watched and mind you this whole time she's never really been in love for all five i think it's all five seasons that i've seen mm -hmm. she's not she has been in love once and now she's finally like gonna get you know well i hope not ruining for someone um but Maybe cut that out, Colt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil the show for anyone. But yes, I agree with you. Range is great. Um, but tonight, tonight's topic, I had two. I kind of, I, I wasn't sure. I think I want to kind of do what I did last time. I want to do like a sub round, a mini round. We'll see how far the mini round goes. It's a little more lighthearted. And then we'll go to the actual topic for tonight. This was um, the round? This is the second round. This is what? Sub sub Reddit. This is the sub sub mini round. This is the sub sub mini round. The this is the warm up the mini round that's going to get us warmed up for the actual. It, correct, because it's all about right. foreplay. Um, I wanted to talk about firsts. Ooh. I don't think we've really talked about firsts. So I want to do, just make sure I want to do, I think I want to do, I should have just round the fucker out and do some five. Um, and if you can remember the order, if not, I'll try my best to remember the order, but you're going to go, um, uh, first, first kiss doesn't have to be in any particular order. First kiss, first love, first heartbreak, first fight, and then first job. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. first kiss, first love, first love. breakup, first right. fight, fight, first job. In any particular order. All right. Well, I'll just go in the order you kind of laid it out in. Um, yeah. Uh, first kiss. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say I genuinely don't remember. And why is it embarrassing? I mean, You've been I, married. <laughs> you have a full blown marriage. Yeah, I know. But I mean, but regardless, like I remember my first time having sex, and it was not with my wife. So like I remember yeah. viscerally what that was. Both seconds of that, I remember them. And yeah. I remember, I don't remember my first kiss. I remember not to be, you know, uh, overly hopelessly romantic, but I, I do remember my first kiss with my wife specifically because it was so ridiculously kind of romantic. We uh, were leaving the show. She had been dating somebody else that was in the show for a long time. I had been consistently for six plus months, taking his side in arguments, taking his side in their disagreements, taking his side, taking his side, so that whenever we were together, eventually, which I assumed and hoped would happen, I would know and she would know and our future family would know, like it was meant to be. Like I fought hard for this motherfucker, um, mm -hmm. for this guy. I shouldn't just blatantly throw that out there. Um, we were walking home uh to i was walking her back to her apartment because we lived very close for unknown reasons and um we were on 45th street walking between uh like 7th and 8th and uh she just as we were walking i had my guitar case uh and she just said i broke up with george and she kept walking and i just stopped and I set my guitar down and she turned around and she smiled and in this like haze of 
the, literally the lights of Broadway, she ran to me and jumped in my arms and kissed me for the first time. And yeah, so it wasn't my first kiss, but it was the first one that mattered. Um, first love, I, I, uh, I'll say that first love and first heartbreak, um, first true love was in college. Um, it was the first person that I consider, like, if you, if you do the whole, like, three great loves thing, like, that was the first time that I was with somebody that I felt saw some piece of me. Uh, she didn't see very much. She didn't see all of it by any means. Sorry, you know, um, but she did see something and um, we shared a lot and over a lot of time and there was a lot of ups and a lot of really, really down downs. Um, but my first heartbreak to me came in what I would say was middle school. Um, there was this girl, Trisha Smith. And that's how you know, cause like middle school, I shouldn't remember a girl I never dated. She was just really popular and therefore attractive. I don't even know if she was or not. I just remember she was super popular. And uh, I just remember thinking like, God, I wanna marry her. And then things would remind me of her and I would just like be at home thinking about her and be like, oh. And I just remember feeling like that same thing that ended up years later being when I would be cheated on or when I would be literally heartbroken. It was the very same feeling, just, I wouldn't even say like amplified it. It just felt very similar. Like I can't have this thing that I feel will make me happy. Mm. So that was for me, my first heartbreak. Um, my first fight was with a kid named Bo up at my dad's house. Um, <clears throat> my brother had a friend who had a little brother and uh we would always go hang over at his house he lived in the when i say neighborhood this unpaved road you could just travel back down it a ways and eventually turn off another road and get to their house and um his little brother i didn't like i fucking like this guy and he and i got into an argument and my brother, uh, one of my brothers and his brother said, fuck this, shut, shut the fuck up, go outside. And they sat on the porch and said, fight, get it out. And not only was that my first fight, that was the first time I got hit really hard in the fucking face. <laughs> like, like not like kind of, like, like clocked like that. Uh-huh, no, I'm good. I'm fucking like you try to keep your guard up, but you're like, oh, is my face still there? Kind of hit, you know, like when it just kind of rocks you a little bit and you just that first time you the first couple of times I feel like you take that. You're like, oh, shit. Um, that was my first fight. Um, and then my first job. My first paying job, uh, the first time that my dad retired from the police department he started a tree cutting company. And uh, I would, when I would go up to visit, I would work the chipper. And so it was me and the day laborer that we picked up and my dad and my brothers were climbing and limbing all the trees and topping them. And I was, they, I was picking stuff up and taking it to the chipper. And then when the chipper was on, I was running the chipper. And uh, yeah, that was, that was my first five. I, I got paid the same thing they did and I fucking loved every second of it. They didn't take breaks. I didn't take breaks. It was the fucking best, man. That's a good starter. That's a, that's a really good home fire starter. John? All right, so I'm going to do a couple of them in the first one. Uh, first kiss was back in high school, junior year, dated the girl uh, who also was my first love. Um, it was awesome in this in the friendship that we had. But it was also my first heartbreak because she. So we had I think we dated for about nine ten months. Um, but toward the end, remember those old Motorola phones that you can close and it had a speakerphone. Oh my! Is that like the Motorola Razor. 
Not the razor, the big clunky ones. The one you see okay. at construction sites and stuff like that. Like yeah. The big variable ones. So she had one of those. And I remember I called one time and her friend picked up and she's like, hey, she's uh, sleeping. I was like, all right, cool. Just have her call me afterwards. Her friend closed it and not really. She put on speakerphone. And so I was about to hang up and I heard something and I heard her t talking still. So I thought she was talking to me and I was about to say something. And then I realized she's talking to someone else and she's talking to my girlfriend at the time. And she's like, yo, I don't understand why you're doing this. You have a guy who loves you. And now you have this new guy who's showing up and just wants to buy you pretty things. Like you're, you're totally screwing yourself. And she's like, I know. And like, I don't like, I'm trying to figure this out. And like, all we've done is kiss and we haven't done anything more. And she was like, and I could, her friend was like something in the sense of like, yeah, but you're still going out with him and like this weekend or something like that. And originally I was supposed to go out with her, I think that Friday. And then she was like, oh, I need to do Saturday instead. And it was because she was going to go out with this guy first. And so I hear the whole thing. And there's a couple other things I heard. I just remember sitting there and then- There's more, but- Well, I eventually like, yeah, they, they went back and forth. And at a certain point, like it just, it would hurt more and more and more the more I heard of it. So I finally hung up. And then I called back and then I was just like, hey, just want to let you know. And her friend picked up and said, hey, what's up? And I'm like, just want to let you know, you put the phone on speakerphone. And like, I heard everything you guys just said. Oh, and, shit. Then, and my girlfriend at the time, she was in the background and she's like, what? And I just hung up and I did all these phone calls and all this stuff. And it was, so it was a interesting kind of trio. And we ended up being friends and stuff like that afterwards. And it's funny because we, I'm a person who's like, once I know we're done, we're done. And mm -hmm. I had a friend of mine that I was, that I would still, she would come to even, I'm also able to break up with someone and move on and still be friends with them. And so she would still come to my party at my house, even though we, after we broke up, but I would see one of my friends and her always talk, but they would always kind of keep their distance. And I could tell there was interest, but because he especially had mutual or very high respect for me. And I know she didn't want to start any shit after how things ended that they wouldn't start. And it was one night at a party that we were all drunk that I was just like, can you, I brought them together. And I'm like, can you two like, stop pretending like you're not interested in each other. Like, I appreciate what you're doing for me, but can you two like try and do whatever you need to do? And can you not, this is now 18, 16, 18 years later. And they're both married. They both end up dating um, and got married and everything together. They might even have a kid now. I don't know. Can't remember. Damn. Come on, John. Damn. Um, matchmaker, matchmaker. Make yeah, once I know I'm done, I'm like, you guys go be happy. It doesn't make me any less. Um, so those are those three. Uh, first fight is the one I can't remember, but the fight that comes to mind, I'm pretty sure my first fight was with my brother. Um, but the one fight that comes up was my brother and I were in Vermont and my dad's friend had a big farm and him and I got into about something. I threw a baseball and I hit him on the side and he tackled me. So then I tackled him and without knowing, he grabbed this jug of what he thought was water, throw it in my face, but it actually had fertilizer in it. So immediately my eyes started burning and I started yelling. And so my brother started freaking out. Like it was this back and forth run around of a weird ass fight. And we both like, <laughs> It was no bueno. <laughs> it was awful. I mean that though that's horrible. When you when you said he grabbed a jug full of, I thought you were gonna say he figured it was water, but it was full of like cement, like it was like a weight or something. I got really scared. You were gonna be like, and this motherfucker clocked me upside the head. Holy oh, <laughs> shit! Yeah, oh. fertilizer is bad enough though. Like you win for yeah, that. Yeah, my dad's like flat, like taking the hose and just forcing the water through my eyes because we were nowhere close to a hospital or anything <laughs> but he's just like i was rich this shit out hopefully this works out Look, dude you're you're headed to the the number four fight semifinals with that one man. <laughs> brandon tally ho yeah and i think what was, <laughs> the last question was um first job first job first job was oh. at a driving range um a golf course driving range which was actually pretty funny because i started working there like this is in Virginia. So it starts getting cold like October and I started working October, November. So I remember there was three golf pros who would always be there and who teach classes. But once it gets cold, they're just sitting around. There's no one who wants to take lessons when it's cold. So they used to take me out and teach me. And so I, my first job, they taught me how to play golf really, really young. And so I was always able to like, I don't play golf too often, but anytime friends hit me up, I'm like, oh, come play golf with us. And I would actually be able to keep up. And they're just like, how the hell do you know this? I'm like, 
learned it very young and I learned it just that's full of shit. That's such a Gorski move. I mean, like, you, honestly, don't, you don't actively go out and golf, but someone's like, hey, do you, do you golf? Do you want to come out? Eh, I dabble. Gets out there, one, <laughs> yeah. one glove, hat on, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I sliced uh, it a little bit as well. Oh, yeah. A little bit. It wasn't one of my best, but get there, I don't get there, get there. There. there's no fucking way I'm going to eagle it. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I don't remember the last time I trained with a pro, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. All that right, was a fun man. job. That was a fun job. Hit us oh, up with man. five. My five. Uh, first kiss was terrible. Fucking terrible. So we were going into high school and my cousins and everyone, because I, I pretty much grew up close to my cousins and in my neighborhood, we all ran together. They were already in the girls and in, 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 uh, in middle school and elementary. And I was kind of still figuring the whole thing out. I tried to be pure, if you will. I'm, like, I'm not gonna have sex or anything until I'm married, man. So my cousins were like, dude, we're going to high school. You can't not have your first kiss going into high school. And my brother was known for being a ladies' man this whole nine yards. Well, anyway, the way our house was set up, uh, the, the houses were back to back on, the, on the, the next street over, and we had a chain link fence. But the other houses, some of them had wood, but this one had chain link. And we went to school with the kids uh, on the other, at the other house. My brother was really close to this guy named Demarcus, and he had a sister named Keisha, and they had a cousin. And that cousin would come to town every so often, and she liked me. So one fine summer's day, my cousins, are, they've already set this up and they had a car that didn't work, a Cadillac that didn't work, just sat in a driveway. And so we go over there and the cousin's like, let's go sit in the back seat for a little bit. And in my head, I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I have never been, oh, what the, what am I gonna do? Get in the back seat, she tries to kiss me and I like move my head. So then I'm like, fuck, you're being a giant something and i get out the car i go home i sit in my garage and i like pep talk myself up just go back over there and kiss her all you have to do is just like just lean in just like close your eyes and just kiss her i'm like 13 years at the time just lean in kiss her fuck it no one's there i walk back i knock on the door she opens the door eating captain crunch puts the bowl down, grabs me, and shoves her tongue into my mouth. <laughs> no questions asked. Like, it's, a, and I'm just thinking, ah, that's very peanut buttery and crunchy. And she's like, you're welcome, and closes the door. <laughs> and I'm standing there just with just cereal just residue on my face and just my mouth. And I'm just like, that just happened. So my first kiss was not the greatest. It wasn't romantic by any stress of the imagination at all. First love, first love, first love would be the woman that I, the, the woman that I dated in, 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 in uh, I call it a woman, but the, the girl that I dated in high school, Letitia Hightower. And she was like my, like first, like, after that kiss, she was my first everything. So once I got to high school, she became my first everything. Um, but that ended uh, four and a half, five years later, and it was whatever. First heartbreak though, first heartbreak was in middle school. No, I'll take that back. I'm actually not gonna, I'm not gonna do that one. First heartbreak is in fifth grade. Her name was Sarah Rainey. She was Irish. She was like three inches taller than me. She had freckles and red hair. And I, uh, my teacher, my math teacher at the time was uh, Mr. Fitzgerald. And he was, he, he was a, 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 like a bigger Texas guy, red hair and whatever the case may be. They weren't related at all, but just give me a picture. So I remember chasing Sarah in on the playground. And then she would turn around, she would chase me. And then her friends, it would be like three of them. And then I get two of my friends and we, we make these little games. So anyway, 
one day she sends me, uh, like she gives me a card for her birthday party. So I go to her birthday party. I meet her parents and everything. Very Texan, very Texas, but I'm the only black kid at this party, mind you. And sinks playing, pretty Spears is blasting. Uh, and then we say, we're gonna be boyfriend and girlfriend. So now we're sending notes in school. We're doing this and that, whatever. I think, it, I think like two months go by. I think Valentine's Day is coming around. Pretty sure it's close to Valentine's Day. We had this, um, we had this like mailbox set up where you could like put your letters in for who you wanted them to go to and what class they were in and all that stuff went great. And so instead of getting, instead of me getting like a Valentine's Day letter or whatever in the box, she walked up to me and she said, my parents can't, I can't, my parents said I can't be with you. And I was fucking rocked and I didn't know why. So I'm crying or whatever the case may be. I think I'm at lunch or something. And someone's like, you know why you know why uh, Sarah broke up with you, right? And I was like, no. And they were like, because her parents don't like black people. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah. And when I started to put the pieces of the puzzle together, like when I was over there, it was, it was like, all right, we'll tolerate it because you're young, but the attitude and the energy was just like not there. So then I'm in class, I'm, I'm crying about it. And uh, I guess the teacher got work wind of it. And he said, hey, Brandon, come here. He says to me, Brandon, people like that will always be in this world. And you can't let them determine who you are or if you should be loved or whatever the case may be, that's on them. Just know that you're a good kid, whatever the case may be using this pep talk. That's my first like heartbreak. It was fucking the worst. Um, First, first fight, I think I talked about it on here before. Me and my brother got into a fight with these two other kids. Mm -hmm. I did, right? I picked the kid in the stomach. Yeah, that's my first fight. Yeah, but it hasn't seen the episode. I, I don't know which one it is, so I can't, I can't link up here to the rest of the playlist. <laughs> like, no, so, give, it, a, give, a, a, give us the spark notes. It's spark notes and bullet points. There were two kids who we used to play with that lived 10 houses down. And there was this big field. We lived in Fort, Fort Lewis, Washington at the time. And it was like a military style housing. And our property, our lot was a, like literally the last house on this row. And then all the houses stretched out to this train track. But the last house before the train track was these two kids we played with. One day, I guess my brother and the kid get into a disagreement about a toy or some shit. And my brother and the guy start pushing and shoving. Well, pushing and shoving turns into punching and grabbing. But then his little brother comes out and is now trying to jump my brother. And I've never been in a fight and I didn't know what to do. So I just ran up screaming like, nah! and I grabbed the kid. And as I'm like trying to tussle with him, I just bite his fucking stomach with all I have. He's, he screams to high hell to where his mom comes out. <laughs> what are you doing to my son? We get broken up. My mom hears all the commotion. She runs down the field, grabs us, takes us home, tries to figure out what the story what the story is. We go back, whatever the case may be. We got, I mean, we got spankings for sure for yeah. getting to a fight. We got, we got, we got looked for sure for getting to yeah. a fight. But that was my first. In that decade in 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 this family, like corporate yeah. punishment was 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 happening when you bit someone on the fucking stomach. It doesn't matter why you bit them on the stomach. There was just a necessary level of, of, of punishment that was necessary. I had no tools in my tool belt, okay? No one taught me the fisticuffs. Hey, you know what though? I, I, I stand by what you did because what you did was the same thing that given the circumstances of not being able to do anything else, any one of us, would do yeah take somebody that you fucking love with all of your heart right now and tell me that you wouldn't bite somebody's stomach <laughs> to, to, to to what you feel like is save or protect that person you wouldn't a fucking heartbeat and you know yeah. what when you did it you they the fucking no matter who it was would freak <laughs> out because that's not <laughs> something that's in like the canon of hollywood fights like there's no there's no stunt coordinator it's like all right so we're gonna a jab, cross, you're gonna come down, you're gonna lock him up, you're gonna bite his stomach. Lock him up. <laughs> Not lock can, we just, him up. can we just get 
Can we get the DP over here? We just need to get, so I'm thinking we get hit lighting. it with, I don't know, we go 18, cut into the 50, just real tight. Maybe we go full hundred. Like nobody's doing that because it's fucking weird. And I'm proud of you for being here. <laughs> I'm fucking proud. It, right, showed hey. me the, it, it showed me the extent of how far I am willing to go for the people that I love. Even if I don't have hands, I didn't have hands at the time. I got hands, but I didn't have hands at the time. No, I, I, I just, I, I learned I how to fight. I can, I can, yeah. I can see them from right here. <laughs> <laughs> I get swollen ass knuckles. Just, oh, did you get in a fight on the way here? Did you have a no. kiss, a heartbreak, a new job, and a fight on the way over to this <laughs> conversation? Like, is that, is that why it's a subtopic? Brandon's hands are slowly just pulling him out of fucking ice and putting him into sand. He's like, no reason. I don't have anything to fucking worry about. I'm not dealing with any shit. Back in the ice. Oh my gosh. Real quick sidebar though. I'll never forget this one. And this is a, it's, it's a first fight with a friend. Then yeah. my buddy, my buddy, Cindy Jones uh, and his brother Kendrick bought a set of boxing gloves. And uh, we were over at some friend's house and Sydney liked this girl named Jocelyn. And uh, I, for some, for some, I'm never, I, I was never like the one to like make fun of people or be funny, but this day I'm just like getting on Sydney in front of this girl that he likes. And he gets so upset with me to the point, like, man, fuck this shit, throw your hands up. And I'm like, wait, what? And Sydney, everyone knew that Sydney liked to fight. And I'm like, what? <laughs> everyone knew Sydney liked to fight. And he's like, no, fuck it, we'll get the boxing gloves. And, and Jocelyn was like, yeah, Sydney, he will beat you up. So now he's getting pissed because the girl that he likes is now saying, Brandon's going to beat you up. But no one's seen me fight at this point. I think we're in like seventh grade. No one's seen me fight at this point, right? Because I wasn't a fighter. So I go home and I'm just sweating bullets. And I'm like, I'm going to get beat up by Sydney. I'm going to get beat up by my own friend. My, I talked to my brother real quick. He's like, man, look at the punk. Let's go over here and knock him out. So I'll never forget going over there putting the gloves on with my nerves and my heart racing. And I fucking won. And I mean, this kid was fast, but I just- Was I this just, a lucky shot or was it, and like- it, I think it's the adrenaline of focus. Okay. When I'm in a high intensity situation, I, for some reason, get real clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get real clear. It's the, it's the building up to that I'm like, I don't know if I want to do it. I don't know if I, and then once it's like, and boy, you can't fucking back out now. Here we go. And, and I remember that first hit landing and I was like, oh shit. And I have, re, I had reached up him by like three or four inches. Like I knew that I started to like realize these things. Like if I just back up and I come in. Mm -hmm. And so I just took my time because he they was all about going. Like, how yeah. Stay, how the fuck is stay back? The one thing, I don't know if you guys ever like street fight or like slap box, but it's all about people always think like, like they think fast is going to do something, but you can throw 10 punches and none of them land, but now you're exhausted. So if I wait that out and I come in with another fucking one of these in your face and you keep coming at me talking about, and I just back up and back up and keep my shit here and lean into you, eventually you're not going to fucking want to take it anymore. So the thing became, Hey, and you should fight Brandon. You should box Brandon. And I'd be sitting on the couch and they'd have the gloves ready. And they'd be like, wow, whoop his ass. I don't, I've never boxed before. <laughs> and just started knocking dudes out in the garage. That fucking, that, that, that <laughs> fucking farm boy strong. You just come in, you just bear paw. Just... <clears throat> it was a weird thing. I really, my brother was like, he doesn't, my brother was like, he, my brother loves street fight. So I wasn't bare knuckled in anything. And then when I did bare knuckle, it was the same kind of deal, but it was just this thing that built this, this confidence in me. Anyway, it's been too long on that. And then my first job was at Subway, at a Subway. It was my senior year. I had, I think, four periods because I had like did all my work or whatever leading up to it. So I was getting out early. I was on the work co-op or whatever. And uh, a buddy of mine, Khalif, got me a job at Subway and we both had grills. And when customers would come in, we would freestyle whatever sandwich they got. Makes sense. It was the best shit ever. It was the best first job. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. We now, much like Arby's, have the beef. Um, I think it's we have the meats, but whatever. Uh, we have the meats. 
either way, sorry. There's just so much to unpack there. Um, <laughs> I worked at Jimmy John's in college <laughs> and there were a couple of things that happened at Jimmy John's. Um, one, I actually ended up having to repeat a year. So uh, I went to the University of Cincinnati in their musical theater program, which is a conservatory program. And in the musical theater program, you have to take one semester of shop and, and then you're, you're building sets here. I mean, and they're, they're giving you very basic shit to do. It took me four years to fucking pass this, not because I was a total fuck up. I loved that. I actually learned to use a, a lathe and learned to TIG weld and learned to, I mean, all sorts of shit over the course of my time there. But one of the years that I got kicked out was because I went to the person that was directly above me and said, Hey, I've got a shift at work. I have to go to work. And they were like, well, you have to do this rehearsal for the opera, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I, I have to go to work. Like I need <laughs> money. So I'm going to, I'm cool to go to work. And they were like, sure, fine, whatever. And then I got a call in the middle of my shift and they were like, where the fuck are you? They're freaking out at me. I finish my shift. I go to the rehearsal. It's going late. It's like tech rehearsal. So it's late at night. And, uh, I said, they said I could go. And they were like, they don't have the authority. I said, that's not my fault. Like that's you gave them that authority and they yeah. gave me that authority. They failed me. That was one, one year. Another year I snapped my ankle during a production. So I sat there and had to sort screws. And I was like, I, I'm not going to do this for another six weeks. Like there's, there's only so many, like I'm not doing this. Um, and so I was like, fuck it. I'll come back next year. And then one year, I, I think I just skipped the class. That's not important, but <laughs> Um, the point is I worked at Jimmy John's. That's fantastic. Um, fast food, John, ever for you? Did you ever work in the food? John didn't I, work in no fast food joint. He probably worked at a Michelin star restaurant. No. Nope. Waiter. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, wait. actually, my, my first introduction to restaurants was Olive Garden. Come on, Olive Garden. Fast food. It's the Michelin fast star fast. of the normal food. It's not, it's not, it's not. <laughs> not it's here, your family. It's not fast food. It's not but no, I, I I used to love, I still do love. I mean, I've been able to eat a whole bunch of places, but it's one spot I go with my mom and my grandmother and they, my grandmother loves her little, what's it called? Uh, Unlimited soup salad. Right? Yeah, the minestrone <laughs> salad. She loves that combo. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Good good yeah, time. a lot of good stories at that time. That's where it all started. Learned a lot of stuff there. That was, that was a nice date for me at one time. I used to think that was a good date. <laughs> that was a nice date for me, very, far too recently for me to admit. <laughs> Angelina and I have been to Golden Corral on a date. Golden Corral, more damn, than once. That. Not more than twice. She wised up. The first time she was like, <laughs> What is this place? <laughs> this, what is this I don't know. And the second time she was like, This is last. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. Enjoy. <laughs> um, oh, man. So, so uh, I hate, 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 hate to be the bearer of bad news. But as I said in the group chat, I do have another call at 1015. So I believe that the warm up may have to be part of our actual conversation, a larger part. I can go a little bit over, but I can't. Where are we at right now? I don't even know what time it is. It's 10 o'clock. So we got about yeah. 15, 15. 25 minutes is the is the push point. Um, the push point? I have a little bit of leeway. So I don't want to, I don't want us to, uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I would have enjoyed watching this. I would have enjoyed, I enjoyed very much being a part of it. So I don't want to um, keep anybody from a, a true topic, but I'm scared that if we were to dive in that I would have to say la vie to you guys and i, I think i think i think we can i think we can do it right if we're all mindful it's not it doesn't even we don't even have to go super in in into it okay we can cut all this out by the way <laughs> i'm not cutting any of this out i really like this right. 
Yeah, <laughs> oh, very nice. Hey guys, look right into the conversation and all of this. No, real quickly, um, a buddy of mine, Bashe Williams, posted this thing, and I said, "Insecurities men deal with." And I wanted you to, I wanted us to focus on one insecurity, whether it was in elementary, middle school, high school. Now, one insecurity that you have. Like, just pick something that you know you were like, I am self-conscious, I am self-aware of this one thing, or I was picked on for this, and it became an insecurity that I developed because I was told this or this was said about me. John, I've been commandeering the conversation. You go first. Uh, yeah, one that comes to mind, and it's kind of funny, the, whole, uh, the short version of the story. So I've always had a, uh, this insecurity, will people show up for me? And it's actually one of the reasons why I started throwing parties. Um, I had a hard time making friends. And so instead of going out and making friends, I made them come to me. Um, wow. And I used to throw the best parties in high school. Like I remember my favorite little two to myself realizing, oh shit, there's something here was I threw one of the three big prom parties from my high school. Now, granted, I had the smallest party because I only allowed the people who were on our limo to come. So I had 22 people at my party. But the other two people who were throwing the big parties both called me and said, if we cancel our party, can we come to yours? And I was like, no, because you were in our limo. It's only for us. Um, so, but, I, but having both of them call me was like a big, like, holy shit. Like, all right, cool. There's something here. But I used to throw big parties and like, some people challenged me so my insecurity had always been and it's funny because in high school friends would be like oh you're throwing parties tonight and I'm like yeah and like who's coming I'm like no idea I don't know if anyone's gonna show up and it would be my biggest parties would when I'm like I don't think anyone's gonna show up and even <laughs> now as I've gotten older I've had exes I've girls have dated and stuff like that and they're the ones who call it the most but like I can know my birth I know when my birthday is I can be like all right cool my birthday I'm gonna throw this big dinner and blah 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 I will wait to like three days before my birthday to start inviting people because what I have it's this past year I've, I've switched it up. So now I'm a little more aware, but what I used to do was to avoid not having people reject or people say, Oh, I, I can't come and hurting my feelings. I would basically wait to the last moment. So hopefully they already had plans. And if they can't come because they already have plans is because of that, not because they don't want to come. And so it was this whole idea of like, are people going to show up for me? And I've been proven over and over and over and over that people always do show up. People always come out, but it's, it's just been something I've always kind of struggled. Will people be there when it matters most? Cause there's been a couple of times where people didn't show up or the person I thought would show up, didn't show up um, and it hurt. And so it's just one of the things that just allow myself to be okay. And, and then the big thing I, my mantra now is, it doesn't matter. Who, um, you don't need everyone to show up. You just need the right people to show up. Hey, who show up are those right people? Um, it's like this every week we show up, and it's like that's an example of the right people. We talk almost every day through the messages. These are the right people, uh, and that's what I'm coming to realize. This is like the I, the people always show up. Have you? That found was really that was sweet, by the way. Like I love that whole like it. It just I tasted feel, good. It was beautiful. yeah especially how it connects to what anybody watching this or, or not watching this. Um, well, anybody who's watched the series at all knows about you. Yep. As a planner, that's a beautiful thing. Yep. Because, uh, my next, my kind of follow up slash challenge slash hashtag Brandon challenge to you would be, have you found that over the years you have, um, forced yourself to back off from the, uh, kind of immediacy of things to, to not give people as much? Like, have you, have you found that you've built up a thicker skin to allow more of kind of what you just said, which is, I can't worry so much about who's gonna show up because who's gonna show up is who's supposed to show up. Has that been something that, whether it's event planning and career that's brought you there or just your personal journey, is that something that's happened or do you still struggle with that? Uh, I still, I still struggle a little bit, but actually this past birthday and it was, so I plan my birthday every year. I've had two years where some people have told me they're going to try to surprise me and like, I figure it out or, and I don't even try to, but if one way or another, I figure it out and it doesn't end up turning out what they think it's going to be. Um, so I've always kind of had a control over my birthday, but this past year with the ladies I live with, it was so funny because they're just like, don't worry about your birthday. They said one day passing by and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And they're like, just don't worry about it. I'm like, okay. And then it comes like the week of, and then I was like, 
hey, I know you kind of said don't worry about it, but you mean like don't worry about it, like don't do anything? Are you guys planning? <laughs> if you can give me any info, and I kind of need to know. <laughs> And they're just like, stop asking questions. Just like, this. and I'm like, okay, 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 okay. So, and this is during COVID and all this stuff. And so I'm like, it's not gonna be much. Maybe it's just the three of us. Maybe they're taking me some. I don't know. Yeah. So the day of, one of my other friends hits me up. She's like, hey, I'm gonna figure out the dinner. And I'm like, oh no, I, I, I can't. I'm, uh, my roommates actually have something planned. And like, no, no, they, they said it's fine. And I'm like, but did they? Because they told me specifically <laughs> to be here. And you're trying to take me out. And then my roommate is like, yo, do what she said. Go with her. I'm like, I just, okay, okay. So I go, but long story short, oh, I, I was like, okay, so it's probably going to be five of us. Because my other two friends I had, I usually hang out with. And then the other two girls and myself. Well, I, long story short, I came home and it was about like 12 of our closest friends. And they even, one of the friends who came owned one of the um, uh, COVID test companies. So everyone got tested. Like even when I got there, they're all like surprised. And now go to the back and get tested really quick. You can't hug us or anything yet. Go get your test. And so everyone was like tested. Um, everyone was negative. And it was a surprise for me because I was like, wow, I trusted. And that's why I have so much love for these ladies. I trusted them with something that was very difficult for me to trust. Mm -hmm. um, but it allowed me to see like, wow, people do show up. And these were all people that I love and had so many amazing things to say um, about me. And I just reminded him, like, yeah, dude, you're good. You're good. Hell oh, yeah. Brandon? That, that was warm as shit, dude. That was great. That was, that was great, John. That was fucking great. I love getting to know you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really yeah. nice. Thank you. Un unintentional, ironically unintentional, because it's kind of baked into the idea and the concept of this, but we don't have to share the, the way that we do yeah we can we can get away with having these conversations without really diving into what our personal thing is it's our personal stance on things yeah but i'm very thankful that you two are both so open that you you were like nah no nah, fuck a stance this is where <laughs> i stand based on my personal experiences and my personal outcomes um <laughs> that's fucking cool uh, Dude, uh, for me, for me, it started early as my eyebrows. I've got thick eyebrows. Hey, yeah, you do. Mm, right. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so, well, when you don't have this going and you don't have a beard and you're in, in, in elementary and your eyebrows are as thick mm -hmm. as mine, they had they had no shape to them, they had no form. So I just remember like kids being picked, like picking on me for my eyebrows, and like I just wasn't considered a cute kid because I remember kids that I was growing up with, they would be like pretty. Like the boys that I grew up with would be like pretty. They would have like the baby hairs laid down and their hair was braided. And like, it always seemed like they had like really like thin, tiny eyebrows and like already had like peach fuzz and had none of that shit. So I literally developed like an insecurity around uh, my eyebrows. So then my mom, I think I was eighth grade. I, I regret it partially. She's like, we'll go get them shaped. We're gonna go get them, we'll go get them plucked and shaped where I go. So we'll go and you don't have to worry about it. And I remember going to the beauty salon. Why is he laughing? Brandon, I'm laughing because I had to do the same fucking thing. My stepmom used to take me to get my eyebrows waxed in the middle, but then whatever the fuck they put on there would cause me to break out. So I just had pimples instead of a unibrow. It was a una pimple brow and I'm dying because I love you so much. And I'm, 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 I'm sweating over here. I'm just <laughs> like, y'all, I'm, I'm like losing my shit in here. But I, I remember being in that chair and being like, this is gonna make me popular. And then walking in and being like, I have poison ivy <laughs> on my fucking face. It was the worst, dude. It was the fucking worst. Oh, it was the worst. And then I just, it would, my fucking shit was swollen for a couple of days. And then when it grew in, it grew in thicker. But no one told me because you then because once it grows in thicker, you have to go back and get done again. But I didn't want to go back again. So now it's thicker. It, it was just a fucking shit show. And then um, and then I became damn handsome and I left them where they were. So and then Cara Delevingne came in and everyone was like, you know, I really like, Thick eyebrow. I think that that's such great. 
it was interesting because when I got older, like older women would be like, oh my God, if you have a girl, she's going to be so lucky because they would say that girls, they really want thicker eyebrows or thicker features or thicker lashes. And if I were to, whatever the case may be, she'd get my jeans and she'd have thick eyebrows and they'd be beautiful and they'd shape a certain way. And I was like, thank you for seeing the beauty in me. Thank you. But that was my, that was my one insecurity. Now I just love being hairy. I'm fucking just a burly fucker. <laughs> well, it fits in, it's, it's, you know, it, it fits the brand. Like it's very, it's very on brand. It, was that a, was that a yeah, play on words? Brand. There you go. Uh, uh, I, I, I like it. She loves Gorski, it. Gorski's on the water, or unless it's tequila. <laughs> You saw it. I saw it. He grabbed that plastic full glass of tequila. Um, yeah, Andrew was the first person to tell me that she, she, uh, I just noticed how shitty of a job they did with the crown molding. Um, I'm so, I'm so, I've literally never noticed it, but as you guys know from the group chat, like that's been a big part of my day, which PS Brandon, I was this close to calling you and being like, how the fuck do I do this? Do I yeah, do? it was a whole Dude. thing. I ended up figuring it out. I'm not gonna. Oh, Missy's going crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I'm most proud that I did the entire thing with a circular saw, not even a mice, yeah. like just yeah. a circular saw and some basic eyeballing math, and was like, this is gonna work. And caulking will fix the rest of it, so we're okay. Um, very off subject. Sorry. Um, but Andrew was the first person to tell me that she loved my eyebrows. And I went with her to get her eyebrows threaded because in New York, that's $7 every fucking block. And I walked in and they were all like, oh, you, you get, where do you get your eyebrows done? And I was like, oh no, these don't touch me. <laughs> don't come anywhere near me. No one's ever touching these again. I will tweeze <laughs> my that continue to grow past their prime. And then other than that, like, no. Everybody stay the fuck away from me. Um, yeah, I had I had a lot of insecurities, um, a lot of insecurities, but the uh, ones that continue to pester me now, um, a lot of them were were physical. A lot of them were were just things with my body. Um, but the things that have stayed with me and that I'm just now dealing with, which I think would be most pertinent to the conversation are, um, there's two, one of them ironically, which is why I kind of, when you watch this back, you'll see that I like took a moment because I, the episode for tomorrow has to do with one of my insecurities, which is that I, uh, at a certain point did too much and shared too much and was just so extra but not for the purpose of being there in the relationship for the purpose of looking like a hopeless romantic to everybody else. Um, I did it for the wrong reasons, uh, which we kind of go into more in the episode and we'll talk more about on Tuesday. And that was, that was an insecurity when I realized, oh, I don't really have a gauge because I'm only doing it for how it looks. And that became this insecurity of, am I doing this? I really had to get into that self-awareness bubble of going, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. um, but if I was to say the number one thing that is my biggest insecurity, it's that I, um, oh man, this is, I'm embarrassed to say it because it's something that I'll know tomorrow, but I don't know a hundred percent how to change the tires on my Jeep. I don't know everything about that fucking car. If it breaks down, I don't know how to fix it. Um, I know certain things. I've learned a lot of things. Uh, same thing as the house. The reason that I send you guys pictures of that mantle, and for those who don't know, we're building a mantle in our new apartment. We'll put up pictures soon. Uh, and bought a fireplace, I fixed it, built it up, and it's in here. But I had to learn all of this stuff. And I've never learned, I've never known how to do any of it. And I'm very happy that today I installed molding on the bottom of it after building a fucking mantle. Like I'm proud yeah. of it. Um, but I think because the refinery does have to do with men um, and the issues facing men, that is something that 
has been this thing in my brain lately are these, there's certain skills that I, I feel, whether it's the era we grew up in or, I mean, there's a bunch of relativistic things to get into, but as a man, I don't know how to do certain basic things to take care of my family. Hmm. Why, again, for the second week in a row, I preach shop class as soul craft, that book. Shop class wasn't a part of my education until college. And then I did learn certain things, but I don't need to use a lathe in here. There's no fucking reason. There's no reason for right. me to build anything in this apartment. Right. But I don't, and though I know how to use a miter saw, I don't fucking have one. I don't, right. you know, I have a circular saw, I have an impact driver, I have like, you know what I mean? Like I have sanders, I have certain things, but I, I've had to learn these skills on my own. Um, and it's been a huge insecurity that I'm overcoming by way of action, which is how we all overcome our insecurities. Yeah. I overcome them by action. It's the inaction that is the insecurity, right? It's the, I don't know how to change a tire and then nothing else happens that fucks with us. It's the things that we don't do anything about that fuck our lives up. It's the, it's the things that we recognize and acknowledge and then make a choice about. I may, I may fuck it up the first time I change a tire on that Jeep in the garage, but eventually I'm never going to worry about it. Yeah. I'm going to be able to take care of my family, which is a big thing for me. So I think the overarching thing is just a, a level of security with knowing that I can do everything in my power to take care of my family. And I, I know that currently I'm learning that I'm getting better at that, but I'm not quite there. And that is the biggest insecurity that I have. Hands down. You guys are both badasses for sharing. And I appreciate you. Yeah. Vice versa. Ditto. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, to our viewers, to our watchers, to our audience, if you have something you'd like to share, whether it's your first, your, your five firsts, uh, you'd like to share them, put them in the comments below. Uh, if it's your insecurity, we'd like to have a conversation with you and know that we, it's a space for us to share. Like the refinery is not just we're preaching to the choir and the choir can't sing back. This is something that we get to share and we get to do this together. We get to do this thing called life together. I love my brothers. I love you guys. Enjoy your night, both of you, you handsome devils, you. And until next time, well, until five minutes from now in the group chat. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'll be at like an hour and five minutes. It'll be as I'm heading to bed, but I love y'all. Cheers. There okay. you go. Cheers. Akuma. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. What a, what a wonderful <laughs> phrase. Yeah. It means no worries for the rest of your days. Love y'all. Love you. Love you guys.